why is the Nicaraguan government cracking down on the Catholic Church? For months, the Catholic Church has been facing increasing repression from the Nicaraguan government, prompting concern from the Vatican and regional international bodies governing the Americas. On August 1st, the police arrived at the Divine Mercy Parish in the Diocese of uh, Matagalpa, Nicaragua, to shut down one of the radio stations operated by the Catholic Church. In total, seven Catholic radio stations were quickly shuttered. According to Nicaragua's Regulatory Board for Telecommunication, the radio stations operated by the Catholic Church have had no valid operating license since 2003. Religious processions have also been banned, citing security concerns, and 18 nuns from Mother Teresa's Missionaries of Charity Order were also expelled from the country. Numerous priests have also been arrested or essentially put under siege within their own homes by national security forces. Bishop Alvarez, one of the most vocal critics of Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega, believes that these attacks are happening due to the Catholic Church being instrumental during the 2018 protests that rocked the nation. During that period, the church sheltered student demonstrators and allowed them to collect food and money under its roof. More than 355 people were killed and 2,000 were hurt during these massive protests against social security reform supported by the Catholic Church and business groups. Ortega's response was to label Catholic leaders, including bishops, as terrorists. Ortega, oh, since 2018, nothing has been the same, with opponents to the government being arrested and, and detained until finally, only the Catholic Church remained in opposition. The prominent leaders, Cardinal Leopoldo Brenes and Bishop Silvio Baez, have lambasted President Daniel Ortega for the violent crackdown. And so I wanted to talk about this because this is a story that has been on my radar for a few months. Um, but like I said, with some of these news, I, I like to watch it kind of evolve and then I come present it to you guys once there's um, more that's out and I have more understanding. So I thought that this was really important because like I said, this has been going on for a long time and it seems like, you know, it kind of kicked off in 2018 and then recently, it, within the past few months, and even the beginning of August, things have accelerated greatly. Um, and I thought it was really important to talk about because um, there's like a weird Marxist contention here. So the president, uh, Daniel Ortega, was a sad Sandinista rebel leader who helped overthrow the previous government. And the Catholic Church was previously aligned with the past fascist dictatorship until, what was it, like the, the 80s, 70s, they, um, the, the Sandinistas started to take off and then the Catholic Church actually did align with the Sandinistas for a period of time, kind of as a liberatory movement, right? And theoretically, like, they've been kind of having good terms with the um, Ortega's government for some time. Like, they were supposed to have a mediating role and kind of work as middlemen between a student opposition and the government itself. And ultimately, that entire effort failed. And then as Ortega has basically just gone full dictator in the style of the man that he overthrew, um, like the people who run against him in elections have become arrested and you know, dissidents are arrested going after reporters etc cetera, etc cetera. and so they were just going through opposition one by one one by one until finally like i said the catholic church essentially remains as one of the few oppositional voices in the entire country and um now it it, it falls upon them to speak out for the people and they're facing a severe crackdown because of it. Like house arrests where they're stuck in their house by national security forces. They can't even leave. They don't have their like electricity is cut off. They're not allowed to go outside to get water. They're like their food. They're stuck in their homes with their staff. Like it's getting really crazy. Wow. I didn't know this. I thought somebody in left here was joking about this. Uh, but then I, when you explained it, apparently it was real. That was probably those goddamn commies going after religion. 
well here's what is interesting because so daniel ortega like he is a sandinista right so and they are marxist but he and in his his lovely wife his wife is also the vice president just to like give you like oh okay so you and your wife run the country okay cool um and they claim to be christian right and they claim to be talking about um you know like oh it's so good to be a christian his wife called the catholic priests like demon yankees <laughs> she called the catholic priests demons i was like yo <laughs> <laughs> but they claim to be Christian, but they're Marxist. I don't know. There's some Marxists who like try to argue that that's not a contradiction, whatever, whatever. Um, but I thought it was important to talk about because, you know, we've talked about before how Africa like is not covered at all. It turns out Latin America is the least reported on region in the world. And so I thought it was really important to shed some light on this. Mm. Well, interesting. Thank you for that. Uh, we have yeah. people in the live chat celebrating their memberships, milestones. Something oh, that's I don't so remember. Cute. The username, something I don't remember. Just uh, celebrating four months worth of uh, four months of membership, and Vishwa Kumar, three months of membership. I didn't know you could celebrate your milestones in the live chat like that. That's pretty cool. That's so cute. Thank you. Guys. Um, Thank you guys for supporting us for that long. I love this comment from D. Ortega was like, I will ban anyone who is against me, even yeah, Jesus. I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but I am actually like, I, I, it's very interesting to me that people see, feel, people see like Marx, religious Marxist people are like, how is that what happened? Um, it happens a lot in the Middle East. Like, Muslim mm -hmm. Marxist Muslims are a big thing. In fact, um, it, back before the Iranian Revolution, a lot of people thought Islam was very much in line with Marxism. <laughs> like they were like, "Oh, actually, uh, Hossein and is like really oh, perfect geez. for uh, <laughs> for you know uh, advocating for Marxist ideals." Like there were serious scholars that were saying like all of this Marxist like or leftist narratives um islamic symbolism is a perfect vehicle for spreading that so that was like oh, a thing. yeah this is why they say the leftist elites will betray you god damn <laughs> no actually this is why a lot of people in iran are now you're right uh, are questioning experts and academics because they have a very bad experience with these liberal so-called liberal Academics, kind of saying like this Khomeini guy, is kind of he might like, be onto something. He's like he's like he's our here's our Mandela, like here's our Gandhi. He's this is our Gandhi. Oh my God! Did you guys? By the way, we have a lot of Indians in Russia. Did you guys know that the understanding was like Khomeini was Iran's Gandhi? That was the understanding. People are like, this is the age of revolutions everywhere, like in South America, South Africa, India. United Latin States America. is going through, yeah, Latin America. United States was going through Martin Luther King. It's their answer. This is like the people's revolution. Like, we, what is, how it's working oh everywhere else. Oh my God, else. I'm getting stressed <laughs> out again. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, people didn't know that. People were like, what? Uh, yeah, no, people yeah. thought this is what, you know who thought, you know who thought that like was in line with this line of thinking that Khomeini was basically Iran's uh, Gandhi or Mandela? Carter. That's what Carter, President Carter thought. Oh, God damn it. That's why they kind of supported the revolution. Yeah. Anyways. It's a damn shame. <laughs> this is why they didn't, this is why when the shock got canceled, they were not accepting him anywhere. He was kind of like a, it was like an ally of the United States, but they wouldn't even let him come to the United States to get a, uh, operations for a surgery. Oh wow! Because they thought it would, might it might anger the mullahs. They're like, we don't want to anger the mullahs. We might actually have a relationship with them. But then the whole embassy thing ruined that. <laughs> like <laughs> the guy that was like doing everything, the guy that was an ally of United States in the Middle East, like their major ally, right? 
a major ally of the United States. The Literally guy had placed cancer. by the government. No, they were like not. They were not treating him. They were like, you can't come to the United States to get like treatment for your cancer because we, we the Khomeini, the Mullahs might get upset with us. But at that point, they were the Americans were still oh hoping that they could have a relationship with the Mullahs. This was before the embassy takeover. Anyways, we need to move on. Um, <laughs> Susie getting stressed out in the corner again. Oh, oxymoron is saying Gandhi would have been worse if he didn't die. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a big claim. Gandhi oxymoron is claiming that if Gandhi had stayed alive, he would have been worse than Khomeini. Okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. Whew. Whew. Oh my god, look at these comments. The far what right brain kind of... rot. Oh my god. These yeah. are like this is a <laughs> These are the people from India. This is a, guys. We don't have <laughs> the anti Gandhi views are coming from our Indian audience. Okay, like this is like I mean, wow. I have Oxymoron... my criticisms of Gandhi, but damn. Look, like Oxymoron is saying Ambedkar believed that too. I don't think that's that. that For extent. different reasons than you, Oxymoron. Come on, be honest. <laughs> Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.